statements. I said, why we shut up Dr. P? I have three reasons. Reason one, the knowledge acquired all these years in my life and the experience gained, if they just remain with me in my mind, if they are locked in my mind, it is just a stone. If I share the same experience and the knowledge, whatever little I have, probably it will be some use to some persons. I thought particularly for youth, it may be of some motivation. That's the reason I wanted to share the experience and knowledge of my life. That is the first reason. Second reason is the self-audit. What is the meaning of it cannot be precisely said, but definitely life he says is a great opportunity to make it meaningful. Jivana Akta or Jivana Vakya Kurtagyu. Jivana Artha Kuru Bhaktakan Dhavakasha Bhagavanta Pratyapuri Koti Rai. So, Jivana Sartha Kavu Bhakadare, if my life has to be fruitful, whether I have done something in my life, self point in the sense, think all through what you have done or what you have achieved. This out of Raichi Bhattar Gura gave you these thoughts. Next is, what I missed, what I could have done, but failed to do it. Third thing, third thing, third thing is, all right, whatever I have missed in the remaining bonus spirit of my life, how best I can compensate, how can I cover them? This will be another aspect. The other writing of Atal Bhairi gives these uh, opportunities. Then also, uh, another thing is, why I thought of writing this is, in my life, coming from a very humble beginning, at every stage, at every turning point, large number of people have wished me, they have supported me, they have helped me, right from my parents, to everybody so far, teachers, the people who have supported me otherwise. I thought it is an occasion to remember them and record them in my autobiography, which I have faithfully done. And then the last is, as I said earlier, it may have some is for motivating people, particularly the youngsters. Now I would like to share, of course, Few aspects have been shared already, and uh, I must uh, say at this stage itself, Mr. Basavapuram Party introduced uh, Chief Guest. And after listening to him, if everyone of you agree with me, every word of that introduction stands true. We have listened to him and uh, perhaps he has been very generous to me. <laughs> he has been talking. Now I'll share uh, from the autobiography and certain instances which I consider them important and necessary as well. As was already said, I lost my mother when I was two years old. My father was not uh, much educated. In those days, he had studied up to fourth standard and was the medium. I'll give a little background to say how it was on the beginning. Our village was the most backward village of the Hyderabad, Karnataka, the Abdid and Nijam state. No electricity, no roads, no hospitals, no education facilities. 
that those were the circumstances. And I had a primary school that in Canada in my place. I joined the primary school. I completed the primary school. In those days, we were not comfortably placed. And uh, till 1970, we did not have electricity in our village. That's why I had to study under the light of the lantern in those days. Thereafter, uh, I moved to uh, for high school study in Raichur. And uh, one day when I had to go to school, I had only one bus which I missed. But I was keen to attend the school on Monday next day. What to do, which is 35 kilometers from my village to Raichur. One bus, my neighbor, always used to take the bullock car to Raichur, <coughs> taking the goods to deliver at Raichur. Whole night, I requested him to take me. I was hardly eight or nine years at that time. He said, no, 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 whole night you may fall down, I will not take you. I pleaded and persuaded him. He agreed. I sat in the car, tied the rope with my hands, Travelled the whole night and reached the school and attempted the school on Monday. That's, it. That's how the, the journey. Now the book will be available to everybody. The cover page of the book, you will notice on the bottom there is a bullock cart. On the top there is a Supreme Court. So bullock cart to Supreme Court comes to you. Time spent and the distance traveled. You will find uh, very beautifully and aptly put by Pujya Swamiji in his uh, words of blessings. And you find this on the uh, back page of the book, Black also. He has referred to it. He says, This cover page is so imaginative, and the cover page itself reveals the entire contents of the autobiography. That's what uh, Swamiji has said. And then I studied in Canada, we then completed the high school. As I said, we were a part of Nijam State. Nijam was interested only in collecting the revenue, not so much for development of the, that place at all. Result was for the Hyderabad, Karnataka, called Gulbarga Division, three districts Gulbarga, Raichu, and Bidar. There was only one. Intermediate college, that's equal to PUC at Gulbarga. No college at Raichu. Essentially, I had to go to take admission in that college. As I said, there was nobody to guide, guide me. I, I lost my mother. Father was not very much educated. And so much so that not even a single person was a graduate in my village. I was the first graduate of my village. And then went to Gulbarga. I did not know that college had two courses, arts and science. I did not know whether I should go for arts or science, nothing. I went to the college, there were two lines, Q. One leading to arts, another leading to science. At that time, there was no guidance. I was not matured enough to take a decision. I saw one, one, one my friend in one line. I said, oh, my friend is in this line. Let me go to that line. <laughs> I, I stood in the queue, and that queue led to science. I completed, uh, I put it precisely, I completed my graduation. And uh, it was referred that uh, during that period, I was considered reasonably good debater. And I was participating in other question <coughs> competitions. I was elected as president of the school and senior. This only presumed for the purpose. I had a principal by name DJ Dawar. DJ Dawar, a principal who has a lot of impact on me. Highly disciplined, punctual, and very, very good in his subject. He was teaching me atomic physics. In the final year, he said, Mr. Patil, 
You don't do anything. You do law. I say good law in you. By that time, having regard to my activities, I was also inclined to do law. But principles and advice formed up my decision to take up law. I took the law, and there again I was pensioned in shortly. Uh, I could I don't know if the law college had not been started in that year in Gurbanga, whether I would plan be today before you as I am. I could not afford to go to Hyderabad to study law because of economic reasons. And the very year I graduated, law college was started. I joined the law college. It was started I, very humorously, I put it in my book. I said, as I studied in jail. Background is during Razakar moment of those days, number of prisoners used to be kept there in barracks. After that was uh, they were no more required, they became vacant. Law college did not have its own building. So they were generous in awarding that barrack to us. We studied in jail barrack. That's why I say I have studied my law in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Next for one year. Thereafter, uh, <coughs> my good fortune, I was a student of the first batch of that college. I got an occasion to become honorary principal of the same college when I was part in that team. I started then, after completing the law, I started practicing in Gulbarna. Again, I was in a dilemma. My native district is Raichur. But I studied uh, all through from PUC to law at Gulbarga. I was well acquainted to the people there. So should I start practice at Raichur or Gulbarga was my dilemma. At that time, we decided to, I decided to start practice at uh, Gulbarga by the advice of Pooja Dhoda Papa of uh, Gurbarga. And uh, I practiced for 17 years at uh, Gurbarga. And two instances I quote during my practice at uh, Gurbarga. There was one poor lady, after the death of her husband, share was denied to her. Ultimately, a suit for partition for an separate position was to be filed. That lady was so poor, torn sorry, I could see her from in my chamber. She was talking to my juniors. I called her and said, you don't face, pay any fees. I work freely. In a suit for partition, relationship was admitted. It was ancestral property admitted and no great argument was required with these few questions. We succeeded at lady prayed. Nim Vodavagi, Nim Makle Vodavagi, Nim Mane Vodavagi, and the Bala, Bhavana Parvaswami killed her. Thereafter, when I became Chief Justice of High Court of Rajasthan, came to Bangalore. There was a felicitation to me. In that function, I said, I am conscious, now you know, there are persons who are more competent. There are persons who are more hardworking. If I have become, got the chance of becoming Chief Justice of one high court, it is not my hard work alone, it is not my competency. <coughs> There is something called divine grace. I have believed all through, it's not my statement, it is experience of life. Human efforts and God's grace together give a modest amount of success. That, that's how I refer. And then, on that day, I referred to that lady who had prayed for me and I was a lawyer. And I said, in all uh, professional life, engineer, doctor, lawyer, or teacher, whoever is, people pay, rich people pay 
fees for the professional service. Poor people cannot pay, but they pray. Rich people pay. Poor people pray. Among the money that they pay has got denomination and value. Prayer is invaluable. And I added that the payment, prayer is more powerful than payment because it's an Possibly, possibly such prayer of that poor lady may also have contributed to me becoming a chief justice of an ICO. That's how I say it. The other instance is one poor friend from coming from the Trump Children's Society. He had entrusted a case, and in those days, in the first week of my career, 50 rupees he had paid. And uh, after I became a judge, he came and walked in front of my residence. Probably thought whether I could, after many years, whether I could recognize him, whether police people would allow him, or whatever may be his oscillation. I, I was studying, I saw from the window, I called him. Anumantapa Varadvanti. He came, I talked to him. Ian Hedi and Ian Hedi, sir, Nan Kes Kota Hedi Uraya Hedi, he is Jajja Hedi Hedi, Yang Khanat Hedi Hedi Nodak Hedi. When I had given a case, you are a lawyer, and now you are a judge. I have come to see how you look as a judge. That made me to think for a half a minute and uh, he added, I a trade person, Yen sir, Sahibra, Yen Sahibra, Tam, Hyderabad area, you change the idea. Change the idea, a thought came to my mind. Should I change? Why should I change? My reply was, Mr. Anmantapa, when you gave, gave case to me, I was a, when I was born, I was a human being. When you entrusted a case to me, I, I was a human being. And as a judge, I am a human being. And continue to, and continue to be as a human being till I die. There is no reason to change. I may quickly add, positions may change. Positions may change. But the human relations, and human values should ever remain unaltered. <laughs> that, that, that's where we are. And then I had uh, fortunately a lot of work. I built a nice house, built up a good practice. There was recognition from all over. In 1978, there was an India. Royal Seminar in 1978, December in Lalbar. Lawyers from our area, I was practicing at Gulbarga. 15, 20 lawyers from that area who had come to participate. At that time, the news was Justice K. Swami, unfortunately, is no more, he later became Chief Justice of Madras High Court. His name had been recommended for the judgeship. But he was getting a lot of cases from that area <coughs> and from Bombay, Kerala. Discussion during lunchtime was, from our area there is no lawyer, one of us should come to Bangalore. Four, they were three, four persons suggested. Ultimately, uh, others were not ready. I took a decision to move. Imagine, place yourself in my position. I built a good house. I had built a good practice. I was well recognized in that place. Leaving that place and coming to Bangalore was not an easy job. Seventeen years I had practiced with them. There are two schools of thought. Some people said, God has given so much in Gulbarga, he will not come to the other people. The other said, no, no, no. You have a bright future. If you go to Bangalore, your future will be better. In oscillation, and uh, my faith again in providence and divinity. We have a famous Shalama Swajara temple in Kulbaya. My wife and myself, after spending 
uh, several uh, nights thinking about it, went to the temple. I told my wife, we'll put uh, two chits, one yes, another no. <laughs> I we placed the foot of, uh, in the temple before deity. I asked my gracious wife to take up one. She took it out. The chit was yes. And that yes, no more thinking. And uh, it was attached so much sentiment to it. I preserved the chit, and that chit is a part of the Vikram, which is part of the Vikram. Now, contextually, I must say, again, with the confirmation of my experience, for anybody's uh, modest success in life, two things are equally important. One is the person, another is the place. Person is very good, very competent, but if it is a small place, there is just no chance for the potential growth. Place is big, but the person is not up to the mark, nothing happens. Place and person together are necessary for some success in life. So that's what, had I remained in Gurpurya, position would have been different, and even the career of my children would have been different. Whole picture would have been different. So, having taken a bold decision to come to Bangalore, uh, again, by the hard work and God's grace, I am today what, before all of you. Then, that, is, that was a turning point in my life, a great turning point of uh, living in Guru Bhargava and to Bangalore. And just a bit, I am before you, everybody knows.